Hello, I own a Zpex duplex tent and I'm struggling with touching the walls. I have a long sleeping bag and uh, therefore I tried to find a better tent and I went and bought the Denders and XMIT 2 Pro tent, a Dyneema tent also, uh, which is a little bit bigger and uh, try it out. You're gonna be surprised what I found out comparing the duplex, ZPEX duplex tent in the Denders and XMIT 2 P tent. Before we start, I wanna make sure we understand I have no connection whatsoever with ZPEX or any connection with Dan Durston's company. I bought both tents with my own money and so I have no bias looking at it. The findings are just my personal impressions. Yeah, let's go and, and start up with the spec sheets. When you look at the spec sheet the material and properties, um, the first thing I noticed was that there are two versions of Dyneema thicknesses you can buy on the duplex and the 0.55 ounce per uh, square yard and the 0.75. I bought the 0.75 ounce per square yard and it's a thicker material. And when you look at the spec sheet, you can see that there is quite a difference in tensile strength and puncture strength. Specifically in puncture strength, it's about uh, two times as, as tough as the, um, uh, the 0.55. So when you look at this, I think it would be great if uh, the uh, Dan Dursen company would also offer a thicker Dyneema tent, specifically important when you get into hailstorm there. Uh, you can go on YouTube and Google and you find uh, destroy tents by hail uh, when they use 0.55 ounce per square yard. The floor material is also different. It's a much thinner material and a more sensitive material with nylon. Um, it's a still PU nylon compared to the Dyneema on the ZPEX and on the other side it's a one ounce per square yard and the 15 denier is about a 0.82 ounce per square yard so you can see it's about an 18 percent thicker material and then Dyneema is a, a lot stronger than the um, uh, sil nylon uh, material also. Yeah so that's the spec sheet material and properties. The next thing I looked at is the floor space and that's something I didn't even think about before that this is kind of important Dan Durson has the drawing of his tent in his website, so that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, so I copied it and you can see it's 100 inch by 83 inch is the floor space. And, and when you look at the ZPEX duplex, you can see it's 50 times 90 and then with the vestibules uh, on the side. So when you calculate this out, you see it's 46 square feet versus the 58. It's about a 25% less space if you have your um, vestibules pulled out. I'm section hiking the PCT and a lot of times uh, when you do this, you don't really need your vestibules. You can leave it open at night, have good flow through. Uh, and if it's really hot, you wanna keep it all open. So when you open the vestibules on the ZPEX, you have a very small footprint with 31 square foot, which basically fits in you know, tiny spaces that Dan Durston, I think, um, does not. You can open up the long side, you can roll it up, but the other part has to be uh, staked out. So uh, at the end of the day, the Dan Durston tent, even you roll up um, the vestibules, you still need 58 square feet. And, and that's a big difference. It's of almost twice the size. So uh, when you go on a long through hike and sometimes you get in tight spaces, you have to go with the Dan Dursen's uh, tent and look for a bigger, a bigger space. It's about twice the size. So when you summarize the comparison on the spec sheets, the pros on the XME 2P are definitely the large vestibule. So if you go out and camp somewhere and stay, like you go on a fishing trip and you stay in one place, have a lot of gear with you, then that's great because you have a large vestibule. Now you also have two vents on the top. The advantages on the on the ZPEX is you have a, a strong material, you have the option to have a stronger Dyneema and you also have a stronger floor. You don't really need a ground sheet for it versus on the uh, XP2P you definitely need a Tyvek ground sheet. I don't think Polycryo will be good enough. You need a very sturdy ground sheet which adds weight to it. So if you add the ground sheet in the tent, it will be more weight. The small footprint on the uh, duplex compared to the XME2P. That is certainly an advantage. Yeah, on the cons, 
I basically talked about it. You have the thin tin floor on the XMI 2 Pro where you need a sturdy ground sheet and you will see when you go in, there is no space for two people laying side by side. You have to sleep reverse. One head is where the other foot is. And that's certainly for stinky feet, not the best thing, I think. Um, it has a very large footprint and um, that's for tight spaces, a little, maybe a little issue. Um, and when you look at the disadvantages on the ZPEX, the cheap zippers, I would say, is an advantage. Um, and it's also tight for two people. It's, I found it a little bit better than the XBIT Pro, you'll see it. And then you need carbon extenders. I think without the carbon extenders, you need to be like 5'9 or below that, that you don't touch the, the, uh, the ceiling of, of your tent. So uh, these carbon extenders are 1.8 ounce. Um, when you have to, uh, not quite the penalty than you have on the heavier ground sheet. So these are the pros and the cons. I would say if you could do a through hike, you go with a duplex. If you go on camping trips where you have a lot of gear and you stay on one side, then I think the uh, XMI 2P is, is the better tent. That's kind of what I uh, would think of. Let's go forward, take a look at how the tent looks in, in real life. I put them side by side so that you get an idea of size and how it looks like. First, we put the ZPEX duplex on the scale. Comes out at 21.0 ounces. And then you put the XMI 2 Pro on, it's 21.1 ounce, so it's almost the same. When you look at the size comparison, you can see it looks like the ZPEX on the left one is a little bit bigger, tiny bit. It's also a little bit loftier. And when you go and touch it, you can see it's a basically has a bigger a bigger back where it's in. So I would say it may be a tiny bit bigger than the XMIT Pro. And here are they compared when you look at them at the size. So almost the same. Here are the uh, extenders for the ZPEX 1.85 ounce. And here's the Tyvek ground sheet at 5.8 ounce. And here's poly cryo for the ZPEX, it's 1.4 ounce. So now you can see how I pitch the ZPEX tent really easy. And now the XMIT 2 Pro. First thing what you can see is when you look at the two tents, what a big difference that is from a size point of view. I mean, uh, ZPEX looks like it's way smaller about half the size of the other tent um, see now this is the duplex now of course the pitches are not perfect but you can kind of get the hang of it look how small the duplex is when you walk over here and then you come to this huge huge tent here and uh, I'm gonna measure the dimensions to show you then what the true difference is so when you walk over what you see when the door is closed uh, the ZPEX duplex is quite above the floor but you can lower it if you want to if you just lower your tracking pole here uh, not a problem really um, it has this uh, lock here and here it's not a magnet but this is all good no problem but when you go over and you look at the uh, size again the z-packs 
compared to the Promit 2. Yeah, I would say it's a it's quite a difference. It's not necessarily the tent, but uh, it's the uh, huge vestibule what you have on this tent here. You see this huge vestibule if you lower the door here and uh, close the vestibule. What you can actually do with one hand is a huge space. It's also a big area for wind. When the wind comes and pushes here, uh, you need to have a guideline and pull this out and tighten the tent. Um, certainly, um, yeah. All right, the next one is how many people can sleep and how big is it inside? So, you can squeeze in uh, Thermalite, Sea Light, beside the other sleeping bag. Now I'll show you what the problem is with this. So you can see there is enough, barely enough space for two. So you see barely two people can sleep in here. Uh, but the main issue is when you look here, there's very little headspace here. Very little headspace here. And at the end there's also very, very little headspace. Headspace here. It's like When you put your a long sleeping bag in, you have no chance to sleep there. I'll show you in a second. That's a problem you hit on both sides the wall even with a normal length sleeping bag but you can see the rest you have plenty of space on the side and and that's what the ZPEX duplex is it's a really wonderful one-person tent next one is you put these extenders on on both sides of the ZPEX like this where you pull it out you may even Lift this up a little bit, make it a little bit higher. Right like this. And then when you look inside, suddenly you have enough space. See this? And this here. See, here now I have enough space and I have here enough space also on the head. Um, so, <laughs> Z-Pex is a normal length normal length uh sleeping bag okay one person that's my conclusion for the zpex now uh, let's look at the uh at the dan durson dan durson tent how that is doing all right so let's see the width of this and here is the dan durson tent with the same two and look at this there is not more space there is to my surprise not more space in it then from the width you can I don't know barely move two people in here uh, it's too tight also it's not really 
a good two-person tent you would have to turn this around and lay head to toe then I think you can put this in so you can see there's just not enough space for this here just like this here a tiny tiny lit space in on this one also tiny spit a oh boy it's a nylon floor it's slippery so it's not giving you well it gives you maybe just enough space for one person uh, one person yep with a long one So, what's the conclusion now? Now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the two tents and which one is the better tent. Well, first of all, I would say both tents are excellent Dyneema tents. They're very, very light. 21 ounce for both tents, more or less, um, is, is great. And you have uh, good space for uh, one person. I would call them both one person plus tents. On the uh, XMIG Pro, I would say the big advantage is if you need a lot of accessible space, um, is good for like an expedition where you need camera gear and all kinds of stuff. Um, then it has certainly the advantages. It has good zipper also, better zippers than the ZPEX. Um, on the flip side, it has a large fit, a footprint, so you won't get it in, in small spaces. And, and uh, that's the advantage of the ZPEX. The ZPEX uh, duplex is a relatively small tent compared to uh, the XMIT Pro. Um, on the other side, it needs uh, extenders. Without the extenders, it's really, uh, you touch uh, the tent walls um, when you have a regular size sleeping bag. So both, I would say, are excellent tents, as I said before. Um, the ZPEX is more for through hikers and I would say the XMIT Pro is more for expedition type when you need a lot of gear um, tent. Yeah, I hope you, I hope you find this uh, review helpful. If you like it, give the like button a push and if you have comments, please leave it in the comment below. Let me know what you think about it, uh, what I can do better, and what your experience is with the XMIT Pro 2P and with the ZPEX, if you see it similar or if you have a different opinion. Thank you, and until next time.